Jaguar Wright has stood ten toes down on exposing the real truth about what happened to Whitney Houston and Bobby, and it seems like she has receipts this time that prove Clive Davis sacrificed both Whitney and Bobby Clive Davis is one of the wealthiest and most influential men in music, but like Anything related to the industry Clive's money and success are allegedly tainted with the blood of innocent people he allegedly sacrificed for wealth and Jaguar believes two of those people are Whitney and her daughter Bobby, according to her Clive wanted to get rid of Whitney and get access to her estate so he had to get rid of Bobby as well, but he didn't work alone and some of the people who allegedly helped him are Whitney's own circle like her X-ray J. Now this sounds scary because what does? Jaguar mean by Bobby having to go so some people could access her mother's EST state. Is Clive Davis really the mastermind behind all this? Let's get into it. That's industry trick number one. Guess who was the first person to, to do that? Clive Davis. Clive Davis does that a lot. And I tell you what, if y'all actually care about what happened to Whitney Houston and Bobby Christina and Nick Gordon, all dead within years of each other. Y'all better support Viola. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah, Grammy yeah. time. Yeah, yeah. And her and Clive had a fight two days before. And from what I was told, Bobby Christina was present for some of that fight. And then the next thing you know, um, she's dead. Ray J was the last person to see her alive. He let the drug dealer in, but she was sober, right? But he let the drug dealer in that gave her the shot. Leola has said, Leola Brown, Bobby Brown's sister, has said on several occasions that... For years now, Jaguar Wright has tried to bring attention to Whitney Houston's death and get the police to reopen the case to no avail. And that's wild because Jag has pointed out so many inconsistencies in the stories fed to us by authorities about Whitney and Bobby's deaths that you have to beat. Blind not to see her point for context, Whitney Houston was found face down in a water-filled bathtub at the Beverly Hilton Hotel on February 11, 2012. Initial reports said she died from an accidental drug owning caused by a heart attack and her state of intoxication, let me tell you when you start looking at all the different accounts of what really happened to Whitney, it becomes hard to tell who's telling the truth one thing is for sure, though someone is hiding something because the details about the bath tube incident just don't add up one of the inconsistencies that have been pointed out regarding official reports on Whitney's death is the fact that they claim Whitney drowned in the bathtub pre Umably as she was taking a bath while intoxicated, but that might not be entirely true according to the report Whitney was face down in a water-filled bathtub with a bloody purge coming from her nose. There were two superficial abrasions to her forehead, and there was a superficial abrasion to the left side of the bridge of her nose. What this means, according to forensic pathologist Syra Wett, is that Whitney probably died under very different circumstances than we were led to believe because the final Anatomical diagnosis on Whitney didn't make a lot of sense, with noted that the water in Whitney's bathtub on that fateful night was extremely hot at over 93 C. According to him, this means Whitney was likely not sitting in her tub, but she somehow accidentally drowned W Express. His suspicions to a BC News saying, I think she fell into this very hot water that accounts for a little bruise that was seen in the left forehead area, some other pressure markings on the face, including the slight laceration. Of the lip and the fact that she was lying face down, I think that this lady fell into the water she was unconscious, dead or dying when she fell into the tub. But that's the craziest part of Wex's observations because he went on to say, I do not believe that the death was due to drowning, although I cannot rule out that she could have been in a gonal moments and with her head submerged in water that certainly could have contributed to her death. Woo. So if anything this man has said is true, then the I Dea that Whitney was deliberately taken out by someone somewhere doesn't seem so much like a conspiracy anymore. Also, his observations line up perfectly with Jaguar Wright's belief that Whitney was beaten and then drowned in her bathtub. It's an injustice to what this look. I feel like anything was. with her name on it is strictly for the purposes of financial gain for those who have access to her estate, including Clive Davis. Including Clive Davis. Clive Davis. This ain't a film to celebrate Whitney Houston. This is a film to, uh, you know, pay to pay to pay the piper. He was the one trying to bring her back, though, at the time of prior to her death, right? Fuck it, him. Uh, he needed her back. 
He needed her back, but he needed her back and under his control. Because if she was chilling in her bathtub and happened to have a heart attack, how come she had abrasions on her face? Where did the bus slip come from? And let's not even talk about the fact that the water in her bathtub was near boiling point. How could she have been bathing in such hot water in First place, it seems more realistic that she was attacked first and then thrown into the tub of hot water by someone who forced her head into the water until she drowned or left her unconscious in that. E-tube until she eventually drowned what's even crazier is that a private investigator named Paul Hubel claims he has evidence that Whitney was murdered and that he has presented the FBI with that information Paul Hubel is an ex-cop who has also probed the deaths of other high-profile celebrities. Drugs, cases, and suspicious deaths, and according to him, Whitney was taken out by two thugs sent by high-powered East Coast drug dealers to collect on all one. Five million debt, according to Hubel, there is CCTV footage capturing both men going into Whitney's suit on that fateful night Hubble, claimed that these two men were unknown to most people at the Beverly Hilton that night, so they could have easily passed through without suspicion, but he also added that not all the people there were unaware of the presence of both men and some of the people closest to Whitney might have known them. Another suspicious fact about Whitney's death is the fact that by the time investigators got there, some things in her room had been removed or moved to a different location from where they originally were at the time of the incident. The coroner in charge of Whitney's case reported that when he got to her hotel room, Whitney's California driver's license had been removed from the wallet which was inside the purse. He also added that prior to my arrival, the majority of the decent prescription medication bodas had been removed from a brown bag that was on the top of that e table in the southeast corner of the living room and then placed on top of that same table and yet somehow police determined there was no foul play involved in Whitney's death. If everything was natural like they claimed, why was her driver's lens missing? Why did her meds get movie from there? Bag and placed on a table, I don't know. But it sure seems like someone was maybe trying to set it up to look like Whitney had been OD being on her meds or something like that, forensic toxicologist Bruce G. Oldberger reported that the level of prescription medication in her system, including Xanax, was mild and didn't contribute to her death. However, she was acutely intoxicated from coke now. For a long time, one person has been suspected of being the mastermind behind Whitney and Bobby's deaths. And that person is none other than Clive Davis, whose record label Whitney was signed to many people believe Clive's reaction to Whitney's death was not normal at all. And to be fair, they have a point let's start. With the fact that barely hours after Whitney was found in her bathtub, Clive decided to go on with his pre Grammy party. I mean, you have to have an iron stomach to stand the thought of eating and drinking and making merry while your mentee and one of the singers who was supposed to perform at your Party is upstairs lying under a white cloth getting colder by the minute it was straight out of the script for a movie set in a dystopian.